Okay, the surface now is dried. You can tell because it's not damp. All right. Now I move on to the next step. The next step is I have to I have to get a bond, I have to bond optiglaze to it right away. And I found the best way to do that is to take a, a new brush. This would be my optiglaze uh, brush that's totally dedicated to optiglaze. And uh, I take a little bit of the optiglaze clear. Let me see if I got that there, that stuff. And I'm going to coat the unit with a light coat of the clear. And what that does is that's going to give me a, a bond to the unit with the clear. It's also going to set up a slurry, I call, I call it a slurry free zone. In other words, what I mean by that is, uh, if you're trying to add colors to a wet surface, what happens is they tend to um, get, they look like slurry. They, they move all over, they look, uh, they just don't coat uniformly. It's like painting on a wet surface. It's almost like water coloring, you know. Uh, when you have a wet paper and a watercolor goes on, it runs all over hell and it glop, it glops in certain areas and other areas. Um, it doesn't. So by coating this with a clear first, and then you and then what I do is I use my um, my step light because you don't want to overexpose optiglaze at all. Uh, you try to keep the accumulative exposure times under a minute is the best way to do it, especially when you're using halogen lights where you're in very close proximity. Because if you don't, what happens is it'll darken over a period of time while it's in the mouth. You want to make sure that you don't, what they call, burn the product, okay? So what I'm going to do is go over here. You might see a flash in the background. I don't know. And I'm going to run this for one cycle just to set it up. Okay. Now that I've set it up, I can move on to the next stage. By the way, if you don't have one of those units, uh, you can also cure optiglaze using um, using any kind of uh, halogen box. Uh, I've used, for final cures, I use the Proform box or the Triad unit. Any of those that don't produce deliberate heat. I know we're going to have some heat with a halogen bulb. Uh, any of those will work or you can do a final cure in a uh, labolite but um, I haven't found that, that I've needed to do anything other than just flash this under a halogen for that first that first little uh, flashing was probably about six eight seconds six seven seconds so now I have a I have a hard coating of clear that's already bonded to the unit and now I can move on to do what I want to do. Now as I mentioned earlier in the demonstration here uh, this is a very monochromatic A1 and so the nice thing is if you have an A1, if you have A1 pucks or even if you have A1 um, self-curing resin like PMMA and you want to just colorize your temporaries that way um, the nice thing is if you have an A1 shade to start with, um, using the Optiglaze color kit, you can use the A+, which is, um, it, it, what it does is it changes the shade, it darkens the shade. A+, they have an A+, B+, C+. In this case, because we have an A1 unit, uh, we're going to change the shade from an A1 to an A2. And it's just as easy as putting a coating one coating at a time onto the unit and then um, again exposing it to the halogen light and then checking the shade and if we want to darken it further we would put another coating of A plus on until we uh, attain the shade that we're looking for. For clinicians it's great because you can do this chair side. If you have a temporary that you'd like to doll up uh, while you have the patient in the chair you can literally match the shade of the tooth and match the uh, clusal anatomy uh, cracks and fissures and the discolorations that are involved uh, simply by um, you know uh, putting it in taking a look at it and then coating it putting it back in the patient's mouth for a minute check the shade if you want to bring it up change it then you can bring out some browns I'll show you in a minute and you can put you can highlight the, the, the pits and fissures but the first step 
and I'm getting ahead of myself, the first step is you want to change the shade. So I'm going to do that right now. And what you do is you shake the bottle. There's a little ball bearing inside of it. Let me see if I can't back this up a little bit so you can see. But there's a ball bearing inside of here, and what I do is I just bounce it around a bit. If you had multiple ones that you wanted to do, you could shake them all at the same time in your hand because they're small bottles. And um, that way, anytime you pick one up, you just shake it a little bit and then uh, proportionate out the amount of material that you need. Now, um, GC has these neat little black pads. I like the black pads. Um, and the reason that they're black is because if they were white, it cures the material a lot quicker because it's sitting out on tabletop lighting. However, it's very hard to see the colors on the black pad. So I tend to roll with the white pads so I can see what I got, especially when I'm, I want to see intensities, you know, intensities of color. All right, so I'm going to just take and put a little bit of that out. Now, you don't have to put a whole lot. Let me show you what I mean about that amount is good to go. I mean be very be very judicious about how much you use. Okay, and then what you do is just on your OptiGlaze brush, remember you always use a brush dedicated for the products that you're applying. All you do is just take it and work it around the surface and paint it. Nice even strokes. Don't puddle it because if you puddle it, you're going to get like dark spots. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go around. Small, wide brush works best. I'm going to go once around the block, as they say. Pick up some more of the material once around the block. And I want to make sure that. I have colorized all the surfaces okay so now that I've got that on there I can go back to my light go back to my light and I can uh, do the first step of curing it's about six seconds and that will run and I'm rotating it around to make sure all the surfaces get exposed okay don't leave it just on the occlusal make sure all the sides get exposed okay so, if you've been following this, and I'll show you one that hasn't been colorized, but they were the same shade, you can sh see that I've already, sorry, go this way, I've already started to change the shade, okay, bring it into an A2 range. Let me just see, I'll get myself out my shade tab for A2 and see if, how close we are and how much closer I have to get. Well, as it as it be looks like it's right on the money and and remember on these shade tabs the darkness is, that you're trying to match up against is the, is the darkness on the neck of that shade tab because as you move down there's translucence I see so many people that take their shade tabs and they put the shade tab in sizal up against the crown that they're trying to match or the unit that they're trying to match or the denture tooth they're trying to match instead of really where the most of the color really is is in the neck and so by holding that neck up to up to the unit we have much better judgment on how close we are to the shade and we're we're actually right on the money so one coating basically brought this into an A2 range All right. so you're at this point now where you've got you've changed the shade and maybe you want to do a little a little bit more like uh, characterizing so you can you've got a chance to do the pits and fissures if you'd like now I like using the A plus for the pits and fissures because it's very subtle when I've used other colors in the kit like the um, like the red brown okay so I have a red brown also um, it's it's just a bit dark and um, I don't you know there are going to be cases where you're going to have really dark pits and fissures but remember we're not we're not going to be colorizing anything but those pits and fissures because if we put any kind of coloring on the inclines and we're adjusting occlusion we're just going to remove it we want it to be down in the cracks we don't really care about the up top you could do it that way if you want but I, I personally run with uh, A plus on the occlusal I'll show you what I mean 
I just kind of take a thinner brush. I've got a thinner brush here, and uh, I just go into the into the cracks. I find that that is, um, you know, subtlety and not being so garish is the way to roll with any of this stuff. We just want something that gives it a polychromatic look and not one that's, you know, really uh, jumps out at you. Because if the other if the others don't jump out at you. Um, uh, you know the other teeth don't jump out at you with that kind of anatomy it's kind of foolish so anyways I'll take a little bit of this and then what I'll do is I'll just run and you can see I just take and run with a smaller pointed brush actually actually here's a little hint or tip uh, the brush itself is from the kit and I let it I let it cure into a point so it's stiff and that way I can take it and I can run it up and down the pits and fissures and it doesn't do anything but just bend a little bit but it keeps that point because it's been cured with the with the optiglaze on it see what I'm doing see all I'm doing is I'm just trying to now 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 say you get a little bit over heavily heavily handed you can always take and you can always wipe them off if you get on too much on the on the planes but again our concentration I'm gonna get a little bit more our concentration is really down in those pits and fissures and grooves. That's really all we're really looking for here. And again, I'll go back, Let's put that down right here. And you know, I'm all all I'm doing is just highlighting, man. I'm just highlighting those areas to give it a polychromatic effect. Okay, once I've gotten the that part done I might want to go over here there's some grooves that we can do on the facial if we want I mean I'm a denture technician I'm just you know these these skill sets were things that we learned at school because we had to we had to learn all of the different we had to learn all of the different specialties and then make our decision on what we wanted to concentrate on so I I've made my share of crowns back a hundred years ago um, and I make temporaries. I've made temporaries and stuff for people. Uh, I make them still. Uh, occasionally they want heat cured processed uh, temporaries and so I offer that service. But again, very simple. See how, see, see how that's, let me see if I can get in here, but I, I'll take a couple pictures and maybe put it on the video so you can see, but you can see that it's very slight. Now, say you wanted to be heavier handed okay and I'll play that game with you I'll shake up some red brown okay and I'll do the same thing what I just showed you with that stiff brush with the little tip on it and I'll put a little down with that and you can see the difference you can see the intensity again it's just a small amount of material just to show you see that little dot and I'm going to take and again, you got to be so careful because this stuff is so intense. But I just want to show you that if you really wanted to, to, to uh, darken them, you could darken them with the red brown. And if you've come to my course, of course, I, I, I uh, touch on all of this during the course. And we get to, we get to practice it and everything. Okay, so. I have a little bit more there than I want. I've got a couple of these little pointed Q-tips. What I'll do is just take and do that. Wipe it off of the... But you can see, doesn't have to be much. I should probably, I should probably mention something else. Um, you know, all of these tend to intensify the colors they tend to intensify when you cure them so it's always easier to put more on than to you know have too much on and then be stuck with what you got okay so like for the sake of demonstration I just highlighted those pits and fissures even more so okay and then I'll put it underneath my light and cure it for about six seconds just rotate it around whatever I gotta do Okay, so now it's all set up. Now, you could stop right there and, th and, and that would be it. 
or you could go on to the next phase, which would be uh, you could add uh, other types of colors. Um, you could put in uh, you could put in all kinds of different stuff if you want. I mean, the booklet will show you. You could put a little brown around the around the uh, uh, gingival third to to give it uh, to give it a, a kind of a darkened effect. Uh, you could put some. Let me see. I could put some. Uh, blotchy little blotchy white in there. I, I know some patients have that what is that uh, uh, te tetracycline type stains uh, on some of their molars or they have some heavy pigmentation along there. You know um, really the sky's the limit on you know what you can do. I can put a little pink orange around the neck of the tooth. The demonstration here is to show you that we can colorize the acetyl but since I already got the kit out, I'll just throw a couple more things on. Here's a pink orange, and I'll put just a little bit of that out. That's great for around that base of the neck. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let me put my tip back on my brush. There's that brush again. And just take a little bit of that and go around the neck of the tooth to give it a little bit of little bit of orangey look around the around the gingival third and don't forget the back side you can still do some stuff there with that if you feel like you get too far up on it just wipe it notice if you notice it, it it's like darker at the bottom half and it's lighter at the top half again you're gonna have those kind of effects in nature and you just are trying to mimic them okay Again, as many things as you'd like to do, just remember every time you add something, take it over and cure it again under a light source and try to keep them down under a minute of accumulated light exposure, especially when you're putting it underneath this, um, the uh, step light. Okay? okay, so for the sake of demonstration now, we've had that cured about four cycles. We put a couple little effects in there and now we've got to do something else with it and what we've got to do with it is we have to add some uh, we have to add some uh, some clear to seal it okay when I'm sealing my brush what I uh, when I when I use my brush or clean my brush I want to make sure that I use isopropyl alcohol so what I'll do is to clean off the clean off the uh, the coloring because I'm gonna go with clear now I first I clean off what I can in order to not uh, influence the clear. Here's the unit I'm going to put the clear on and I drop down on my little pad over here a little bit of one drop of clear that's all. Close up the bottle and then again I'm very careful not to take a huge drop don't take a huge drop on there, just a small drop, wet, wet the brush rather than picking up, and then coat it. If, ever you, if any of you have ever used this uh, OptiGlaze in the clear, man, this is awesome stuff. It doesn't yellow up, it doesn't get nasty or come off, um, it wears really well. In fact, it actually reinforces the surface of whatever it is that you're coating because um, tests have shown that it, it actually is... Um, it, it's stronger than like a composite surface that's untreated, one that's been polished, you know, in the mouth. It um, it's awesome stuff. It's a PMMA with a light cured activation in it, and uh, I started using it thinking it was just like all those other like I'll call them clear varnishes, but it's not. It's a totally different type of product. Uh, I've got immediate dentures out there that I've used for areas where I couldn't get a polish in there, so I used a little bit of this material and cured it. And I'm going to tell you that I get them back, like for reline and so forth, and they still look almost like the day that I sent them out the door, which is really encouraging. All right, so for demonstration purposes, I've coated this. Make sure you get all of it down in the pits and fissures and now you'd run this for uh, a three-minute cycle in either your Labolite or 
if you wanted you could go over and put it in your halogen light box for about 30 seconds something that's rot has rotation and and a good halogen exposure and it gets the unit from all sides and remember whenever you put a, anything that you're curing into a light curing unit it's always wise to elevate it inside of the unit to get it uh, nearer to the center and off the floor of the unit as much as possible so that um, the light has a chance to hit it from all angles okay it's one of the reasons that I make these little pedestals out of uh, out of uh, putty um, I can once I'm done with this unit I'll be able to to d dispose of it but it sits it up off of the floor of the curing unit and allows the light to penetrate it from all sides because that's the big thing making sure that it can get underneath there and get it from all sides at the same time it's doing the occlusal so with that being said I'm gonna take it over and I'm gonna put it in my uh, in my proform unit and I'm gonna run it for about a 30 second run and I'll be right back